The next question is how to read the spectrum. You have the spectrum, you have gone through all the processes, all the steps, starting from resonance, excitation, and then acquiring the FID and converting into Fourier transform, and then scanning your molecule again and again to increase the signal to noise ratio. Now you have a good spectrum. Now what to do with it? How to read it? How to extract maximum information from your spectrum? Now this is the most important, important part of this course. So what you need to look for in an NMR spectrum or especially a proton NMR spectrum because we are talking about proton NMR uh, at the moment. There are four basic things of measurements. The chemical shift multiplicity, coupling constant, and integration. These four things you need to look for in a proton NMR spectrum and uh, each of these different uh, parameters, it gives you different information. Chemical shift is also known as the position of the signal. So you see that uh, in your spectrum, uh, last time I showed you the, uh, uh, the frequency domain spectrum of molecule in which you saw different signals at different positions. There were about I think 10 uh, signals and they were placed at different positions in that spectrum. So the position of the signal is measured through the chemical shift. What is a chemical shift? We will discuss it in detail later on. Multiplicity. So once you know the positions of all these protons or signals in the spectrum, it will give you some information about the type of hydrogens that are present in your molecule. What do you mean by type of hydrogens? Yes, hydrogens in different environment. Hydrogens attached to carbons, hydrogens attached to oxygen, hydrogens attached to carbonyl groups, hydrogens attached to sp2 carbons, hydrogens attached to sp carbon, sp3 carbons. So all this information you can get from the chemical shift values or the position of the signal. The next thing that you would see, you will see in this spectra is the multiplicity of the signal. Multiplicity means the splitting of the signal. So sometimes you will see in your proton NMR spectrum that these signals are split. You might see some signals which appear as a pure single peak, but some signals may be split into more than one peaks. Some may be split into two peaks, into three peaks, four peaks and so on. Even you might have some complex splitting pattern as well. So splitting of the signal means multiplicity. What information does this give you? Why we see some signals in split form? This splitting is because of coupling with a neighboring proton. So if you find a signal in your spectrum which is split into two, three, four or some complex splitting is seen there, it gives you an idea that this proton has some other protons in the vicinity. Vicinity means that a proton might have another proton that is maybe two bonds away or it may be three bonds away. Two bonds being geminal protons, protons attached to the same carbon atom. We have a carbon that has two hydrogens attached. Now this means that this proton has another proton close to it in the neighborhood that is two bonds away. But you might also have another carbon that is adjacent to this carbon and this carbon may have another proton. So with reference to this proton, this one is three bonds away. So you might have coupling between protons that are two bonds away or three bonds away. 
those which are two bonds away and attached to the same carbon atom are known as geminal protons and those that are attached to carbon atoms on adjacent positions they are known as vicinal protons so this splitting is because of coupling between geminal or vicinal protons right so what information does splitting give you is that when you are looking at the signal of a particular proton and it is split it means that it has some other protons surrounding it in the vicinity the next question is how much they are split and that is determined or measured by the coupling constant values which we also know as the j values coupling constant is denoted by j it is a capital j written in italics so the value of the coupling constant tells you about the extent of splitting how much these signals are split what does that mean extent of splitting matlab hai how much they are separated if you have if you see a signal that is split into two how much these two arms or these two peaks of that signal are separated what is the distance between them that is the distance between the two peaks of a signal if you have a signal like this so this distance between these two arms or peaks of the signal is measured by the coupling constant values or the j values theek okay. hai now this is very important coupling constant values are very important you should know how to calculate them and you should be able to uh, get information from this data from the coupling constant values those nuclei or those protons which are coupled to each other those protons which are coupled to each other or those protons whose signals are split because of each other for example we have this proton and it has another proton attached to the adjacent carbon atom the signal of this proton will be split because of this but this proton also has this proton in the vicinity and the signal of this proton will also be split because of this and this splitting of these two protons because of each other would be of the same value which means that this proton couples with this one by a factor by which this proton couples to this one now what information do you get from the coupling constant values if you find two signals having the same coupling constant value so what information are you getting from this data it means both of these signals or both of these protons are coupled to each other and if they are coupled to each other it means they are close to each other if they are coupled to each other it means they are close to each other so those two protons might be geminal to each other or vicinal to each other so now you have a small structural fragment so it's very important to find out or calculate the coupling constant values correctly because it will give you information about the protons that are in the neighborhood of each other or in the vicinity of each other and that will allow you to construct small structural fragments right the final thing that you should look for in a proton nmr spectrum is the integration you might have more than one protons having the same gamma frequency it is possible you might have two protons in a structure in a molecule that might have the same gamma frequencies you might have three protons having the same gamma frequency we have seen an example previously uh, an ester that i showed you that had two ch3 groups so in both the ch3 groups all the three hydrogens of a particular ch3 group they have the same uh, gamma frequencies now you had in total eight hydrogens but the signals 
that you could expect are three. Means that those eight hydrogens were divided into three sets of hydrogens. Why? Because some of these protons they had the same chemical shift value or the same Larmor frequency. If the Larmor frequency is the same, their position on the spectrum will be the same, or in other words, their chemical shift value will be the same. So if you are getting three signals in a spectrum, that doesn't really mean that you have three hydrogens. You have seen it previously that if you have, you might have eight hydrogens, still you can get three signals. Now how to know how many hydrogens in total are there in your molecule? If you are getting three signals, that doesn't mean that you have three hydrogens. So each of these signals might have more than one hydrogen associated with it. So one of those CH3s gave you one signal, the other CH3 gave you another signal and the CH2 gave you the third signal. So in that molecule you might see a signal for three protons, you might see another signal for three protons and you might see another signal for two protons. So it is very important to know how many protons are represented by one signal. So integration gives you this information that how many protons are associated with a signal. And when you sum, when you sum up all the number of protons from all the signals, that will give you the total number of hydrogens in a molecule. So from integration, what information you will get? The number of protons in one signal and when you add all the protons from all the signals, you will get the total number of protons in a molecule. So these are some of the basic parameters or measurements that you should look for in a proton NMR spectrum. Chemical shift is the position of the signal, multiplicity is the splitting of the signal, coupling constant is to know how much they are split and integration tells you about the number of protons in one signal.